welcome to the Pick Up Korea podcast, and today I want to discuss cold reading. So cold reading is a very important tool that we can use when we approach girls, right? Um, why it's really good is that it can show that you um, notice something unique about her, that you kind of understand her, you are um, used to meeting people similar or have experience with people similar to her, which makes... Uh, the shield kind of drop creates a degree of familiarity, right? Uh, it shows that maybe you saw something unique in her. Therefore, it is very useful, it is very practical when we're out approaching women, right? So one problem that guys have is that they'll approach a girl and they'll say, I like your style. I saw you over there. I like your style a lot. I like your hairstyle. I like the style, right? Uh, basically very direct, very plain, very general. Um, and it really doesn't show anything unique that you noticed about them, right? It doesn't show that you saw anything unique in them, that you noticed much about them, or a general uh, saw them as being different than anyone else, right? But when we use cold reading, uh, we can show that uh, we, you know, observe them, um, we're making unique statements about them, and it creates engagement. And the good thing is, even if the cold read is wrong, then she generally will respond with the right information, right? So in other words, uh, whether what you're observing, what you're assuming is correct or not, the information is still divulged, right? So it's very useful in that regard, right? The girl opens up, she tells about herself, right? And so um, when it comes to cold reading, one uh, important exercise that I have students do on boot camps and immersions and other programs is a exercise where you kind of sit at a busy intersection at like a busy cafe and you just watch the girls walk by, watch them walk by and take note of what's unique about them, what kind of shoes they're wearing, what kind of fashion style, what kind of makeup, what kind of um, hairstyle, uh, how they walk um, and sort of try to feel out what their job might be, right? And so maybe you're seeing an intersection, you see a lot of girls walking by in yoga pants, yoga mats, maybe they're going to yoga class, maybe some of them are yoga teachers, right? Uh, you see others, um, perhaps they wear some sort of uniform, office uniform, office look, and heels, and they're kind of rushing with coffee, going to work, so they're probably an office lady, a secretary, things along those lines, right? And so it's very useful that you can take notes on um, how they're dressed, uh, what they're wearing, how they move, what times you see them, uh, because these are all very important. When it comes to cold reading, um, things you can take note of are uh, shoes, because the shoes can kind of reveal a lot, the fashion style, um, what time of day it is, right? Because say, for example, uh, you see a girl out at like three o'clock um, walking and shopping around. I mean, she's probably what? It could be a Tuesday, it could be her day off. Um, she might be in between jobs, right? So it says a lot that most people are at work or at school, but she's out shopping on a Tuesday at 3 p.m., right? And so that can give us a little bit of clues. She could be uh, a peksu, the unemployed rich type, or in between jobs, as we mentioned. And um, yeah, the, taking little notes about the time, the place, uh, what she's carrying. Maybe she was carrying a um, English book, right? So she's carrying an English book. And she's shopping, maybe she's just taking a break, shopping, and she's heading to an English academy later or a cafe to study for an English exam, right? And so there's so many little things that we can look at that really reveal a lot about the girl, right? Um, uh, I mentioned hairstyle. So hairstyle, maybe she has very slicked back hair in a bun. Generally, those type of girls, they work at a um, like an information desk booth, uh, they could work as a flight attendant. They could work in a department store, right? Uh, others that have like very uh, dyed hair and wavy. Um, they might be in the beauty uh, industry. They could work in like a hair shop. They could work as a, um, in like a makeup shop, right? Um, other types you'll see, uh, maybe just kind of the clean cut, black hair, um, just normal look, so to speak, right? Um, they could work at like a normal company, could be students, right? And so there are little things that you can see, little clues that will um, inform you on possibly what type of girl she is when you look at her hairstyle, right? The same goes with makeup. Generally, 
um, people who are working at companies, right? Girls who are working at companies, they might wear a lighter makeup tone. Whereas if she works as a hostess or, um, you know, at a bar or uh, a makeup shop or something, then generally she's going to have more of a heavy makeup style, right? Uh, other things to look at, as I mentioned, shoes. So the heels, um, if you see a girl um, dressed to the T in heels, uh, maybe she's going out at night, maybe she's is a hostess type, or maybe she is, um, uh, you can look at the what type of shoes they are, right? So they're the kind of like night worker uh, long heels, they're the kind of more classy ones. She could just be like a, uh, a rich local, a model, right? So also paying attention to the brand, the brand can also sort of reveal a lot, right? So if she's wearing, you know, normal heels, kind of a normal dress or normal like blazer and pants, then, you know, probably office lady, right? Could work in a shop. Um, but if she's wearing these sort of super fancy, um, you know, Gucci uh, heels, depending on the style, right? It could be... Um, she could be anything really, right? Like a model, she could be a rich local, as I mentioned, or she could be one of the upper class kind of room girls that, uh, you know, deck that kind of expensive attire, right? Um, other things we can mention are really the uh, accessories, right? Like, does she have a book bag? Does she have a backpack? Does she have um, like cool, unique nail art, right? Um, typically a girl working in an office job is not going to have this sort of, uh, what we see a lot these days is kind of like diamond style nail art and things like this, right? That would imply she's not working a traditional conservative job, right? Um, other things of course are, uh, yeah, the handbag. Is it, is she carrying a Gucci handbag? Is it more of a, um, eco bag with books in them, right? That could tell a lot. That could be a student, right? And of course... Uh, to bring it back to the shoes, oftentimes a lot of students will be wearing more sneaker looks, right? Whereas the company workers will have more actual shoes, more actual heels, more uh, dressy, so to speak, right? Um, okay, so we mentioned the shoes, we mentioned kind of the hairstyle, uh, also the fashion. Um, of course, pretty much anybody who's flown Korean Air can kind of recognize flight attendants have that exact... Uh, uniform right uh if you've been to a korean department store you can also see they have a specific type of uniform as well um you can also just really could recommend like hanging out in your universities hanging out in your uh, academies like english academies and kind of seeing like typically what students wear generally there's sort of a trend um a sort of like average kind of style you know it could be new balances could be nikes uh this year it's a lot of crop tops right and so just paying attention to the different patterns you see, um, taking note of them. Some people like to write them down in a notebook while they're observing. For others, just mental note, and then applying those to your approaches, and you get kind of ingrained with, um, uh, you, you start seeing more pattern recognition. It's kind of like the matrix gets cracked, right? Like you see, um, what I call it is like you're building up your database, right? So you talk to say 100 students, you observe 100 students on the street, and you're getting more information about them. You're taking more data on what they're wearing, what their trends are. And then you talk to, let's say, 100 uh, night workers, hostesses, right? Or you just look at them off on their way to rooms or whatever, right? Room salons. So from that, you can sort of gauge what sort of fashion they're wearing, how they walk, how they carry themselves, right? Uh, you talk to another 100 office workers. And from there, you can kind of see uh, what the typical office worker look is in the area, um, you know, when they're on lunch break, you know, where they go to coffee and things along those lines, right? And so the more you build your database up, the more that when you have an interaction, the more you're able to sort of simulate that familiarity, right? So for example, um, let's say that you're opening a girl and uh, she, you know, let's say it's like three o'clock in the mall and she has a dress on, a nice dress, but sort of more casual um, sneakers, right? And she's shopping, then it's probably, you could probably assume that, hmm, maybe she's a day off, maybe she is a Peksu, unemployed, right? So you can kind of open like, oh, I saw you uh, walking back there. I thought the dress was really unique um, and you had sneakers on. So I'm guessing you're probably not working today. It's probably your day off. You probably live in the area too, right?
So that kind of shows that you saw something, it, it, it creates familiarity and also that shows that you're assuming that, oh yeah, you're probably, you know, day off, you're probably not an office worker, right? Um, that's so much more engaging than, uh, oh, I really like your style, right? Or you're my type or something or whatever these very, very direct openers that don't have any sort of uniqueness to the girl, right? And it's important that the more you build up these references, the more you're able to cold read, um, you will see a lot of patterns. However, you do want to treat each interaction uniquely because number one, they are a unique person with a unique story. Um, however, these cold reads just help to quickly cut to the depth and the uniqueness. It's just a way to um, sort of lower the shields, the initial uh, shyness, the initial uh, anxiety that she might have when someone's new is talking to her, right? And it creates that familiarity, that relatability, right? Um, another example is you could be seeing a girl uh, six o'clock, um, sort of, a, she might have a blazer on with uh, maybe a nice skirt, heels, very sexy look, right? Um, but it does look more dressed up, more sort of office-y, right? And she's walking kind of fast towards the station. Fair to assume she's maybe off, you know, home, you know, just finished work on her way home. Or um, let's say that she, uh, the same girl, it's like 1.30, she has a coffee in her hand. It looks like she's walking towards the office building area. Probably was on coffee break or end of lunch break, right? So that's a good opener, right? You can mention, oh, I, uh, you have a coffee, you have this blazer on. Must, must just be finishing uh, lunch break and you probably work in one of these uh, Yoksam uh, major companies, right? And so that's obviously showing that you observed her, you kind of see the situation, right? Um, uh, other thing could be, other things that you can cold read, other things you can kind of get information from is if you're speaking English, maybe she responds in a Australian accent, right? Um, that's a very clear indicator. Maybe she had studied in Australia, right? So you can kind of dig on those threads like, oh, wow, most Koreans I meet, they only uh, speak American English, but you have this very strong Australian accent. I like it, but never been to Australia. You must have worked there. You must have um, studied there, working holiday there, something like that, right? Um, <clears throat> all your English sounds good, very Australian. You're better than me. I can't even understand half of what Australians say, right? And so you can kind of bring in a little, uh, you know, silliness, don't need to make it so dry, don't need to make it so um, black and white, right? Um, one thing to also keep in mind is that you do not really want to like mention their boyfriend, cold read that they're meeting their boyfriend, their husband, although they might. Um, and for some people, you know, oftentimes if they are, sometimes the girl bring it up, some people, they don't want to continue their interaction there. They have a moral um, uh, moral rule, ethical guideline that tells them not to do that. That's fine. However, it's important to understand that a lot of girls who are attractive will indeed have, you know, a boyfriend or some orbiter guys or a sum, which is like a, uh, like a guy that they're flirting with, a guy that they have a crush on, a guy that they're interested in, and, you know, a whole gang load of dudes um, hitting them up on cacao talk you know it could be they met on the street in the office in their salsa class in um you know the festival on the weekend or the lounge bar she went to on friday right so um or even so getting like friends of friends so just a whole a range of possibilities so um it's often safe to assume that they all have some guy contacting them so that's a good way to look at it, but you don't really want to bring him up, right? That's going to that's gonna kind of kill it because a lot of Western people will ask, oh, do you have a boyfriend? And that'll kind of, are you seeing somebody? And that would kind of ruin the whole interaction. Best just not to leave that, not to mention it and um, go from there, right? Um, another thing is that when you cold read in Korea too, it's good not to uh, cold read with like negs and negative things, right? You can be kind of silly. You can say, Oh, wow, your English accent's really good. Sounds like you lived in America. For me, I can't even speak English. For, I forget. I've been in Korea too long. I forget vocabulary. You know, like, you're better than me. Make it fun. Make it silly. Make it um, observational that you noticed her English was good, right? And also bringing in a little humor, you know, not taking yourself so serious, right? Um, eases up the uh, 
pressure in the interaction, right? Makes it more silly, makes it more comfortable, more relatable, right? Rather than very interviewee. So having that range of expressions in your uh, cold reads, right? Um, when I mean don't bring up negative, don't say, you can say negative expressions like, oh, my English is not even good anyways, right? That's a negative expression, but it's kind of silly about yourself. You don't necessarily want to say negative things about like her appearance or like, oh, your English accent's terrible or something. These kind of insulting things about uh, characteristics of her or how she looks uh, instead of being like, oh, alpha or macho or whatever are just considered rude just considered insulting and so it's best to skip those so stay away from the negative stuff although you can use negative uh, although you can use negative expressions that are kind of silly about yourself and the environment and the situation best to not um uh say sort of insulting things right you can say more playful things right like for example um, oh, it's already two o'clock. You got your coffee. Hey, you're probably, uh, you know, stretching out your lunch break. You don't want to go back to the office. Such a nice day. Let's just skip work. Let's just have another coffee. Let's just go to the park. Right. So it is kind of negative. Like you're saying she wants to skip work. She's, you know, lagging, not going back to work, but it's in a playful way. It's not saying, you know, oh, that sh those shoes are ugly or, um, God, I don't understand your English accents. Terrible. It's saying something in a fun, playful, flirtatious, teasy way, right? That's the big um, uh, uh, point to distinguish here, right? To understand here. Um, okay, another thing that I see that uh, people who uh, uh, are practicing cold reading, one way they also get it wrong is that they'll do cold read after cold read after cold read after cold read. Like, uh, oh, I saw that you have these uh, diamond nail art. You must be working around here. There's a lot of like nail art places. You must have your own shop around here, right? So that's a open, right? And then, um, and then she says, yes, I do. And then they keep cold reading over and over. So it is okay to cold read, but you don't want to make it into this sort of like, you know, the whole point of cold reading is to open her up, get her engaged, get her uh, comfortable, get her to respond, get her to hook, not to, uh, you're not playing like a magic, uh, you know, psychic show on the street, right? Like, oh, so then you must be, um, you must have went to nail art school and you must be in the beauty industry and you must have studied in France. You don't want to keep playing this uh, assumption after assumption after assumption. Uh, you can cold read a couple things and you can cold read throughout the interaction in spurts, but, you know, you want to transition it. You want to mention what you're up to today, what your background story is, kind of explore her story. Uh, mention what you're up to today, mention, um, you know, uh, a little bit about yourself, right? Uh, why you're in the area, uh, comment on the environment, right? And things along those lines, tell a story about what's up, right? Um, rather than assumption, 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 right? Um, very, very important to understand. Um, and so really what I really did, would recommend, as I mentioned, you know, sitting in a cafe that's like outdoors in a busy area and kind of taking notes, different types of girls and guessing what they are, then actually going and approaching. So maybe go and approach as many girls as you can that seem like college students, that seem like office workers, that seem like more model or maybe, you know, night worker rooms types that seem like uh, the Peksu, the unemployed types that seem like maybe fitness instructors, yoga teachers, um, that seem like, you know, uh, students, teachers, really go after the whole gamut. And then the more you build up your reference experiences, your database, the more comfortable you get in the process, the more natural, the more relatable your approaches can become, right? And so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to mention a few exercises here you could do a few tips on cold reading Korean girls, right? Like the do's and don'ts. And um, if you're really interested in finding about the different types of Korean girls, uh, you can actually check out the Pick Up Create ebook where there's a whole chapter on um, different types of girls that you come across and their characteristics, uh, sort of archetypes and emotional patterns and what have you. So definitely check out the Pick Up Create ebook if you can. And until next time.